if you've ever gone shopping and halfway round the store realise you've forgotten your face mask and you wonder why everyone was giving you evils, hit like or subscribe. So today we are going to talk about whether you should buy um, numismatic quote marks, you know, collectible coins, slabbed coins and sets, or whether you should just buy bullion. So this video is aimed at anyone who's probably new to investing in precious metals and it's got money burning a hole in their pockets. It's been looking in the news at all the gold and silver frenzy that's been going on for the last few weeks and months with all the high all time highs for gold. Um, silver obviously hasn't hit its all-time high yet if you know anything about silver um, but it's obviously well up um, and uh, you're probably wondering if you are new you know maybe what should you buy what what you've decided that you are not interested in the stock market and you want to go into physical you want to own actually physically own the metal you don't want it tied up in a bank or a fund or stocks obviously with financial advisors any institution you want to physically own it in your home in your vault wherever it's going to be and um you're just not sure what to do so this is just some thoughts of of uh my experiences in buying both sides over the last few years and i've just put a an example here so what we've got on the left here is uh numismatic quote marks collector coins okay roughly about two ounces of gold here these two this is silver we'll come on to that in a minute and on this side we've just got two ounces of bullion basically okay gold bars five gram one gram two gram bars ten ounce ten ounce uh coins one tenth one ten ounce gold coins one tenth of an ounce gold coins and quarter ounce gold coins okay I'll come on to the reasons for that as a few sovereigns here. I'll come on to the reason why I'm using those um, those sizes of fractional gold and um, it'll make more sense later on. So, um, so let's start with the um, pros, the basic pros of why would you buy this slab stuff now? I'm going to make this this uh the points based on the current climate the current covid 2020 climate um this is purely aimed at somebody uh, i've had comments in my um and, and people messaging me about you know what they ought to buy um i'm not a financial advisor but i'm i'm making this video because uh, i'm hoping it will help people make a decision um, and make their own mind up based on you know my um, experiences so and it is based on the current climate now so you're a noob to the physical um, precious metal world you've got some money burning hole in your pocket and you've probably been on youtube and you've seen all these amazing coins people uh slab stuff amazing sets stuff that's old new yeah it all looks amazing you know should you buy that well, the short answer is no. You should stay so far away from it and steer well clear of it, any of this stuff. Okay, so I'm basing this on you are somebody that doesn't really know a lot about collecting coins and bars and whatever it is, any kind of precious metals. And the reality is if you start getting you getting into this stuff and you are potentially taking a massive risk firstly because all this kind of stuff uh, normally commands a premium and that premium you're going to pay and you're not going to really know or have the time to investigate and research whether what you're buying is any good this bullion on the right here is just a box standard this is just a, a box standard let's take this britannia silver britannia for example is um there's nothing special about it it's just a silver one ounce britannia coin okay this is 20 what year have we got here does it really even matter what year um i think it was 2020 yeah it's 2020 this in this slab here 
is a 2017 Britannia. Okay. Same coin, same weight, obviously just different years. And this is a uh, got a deep proof like finish, which means it's just a it's a better coin. Essentially, it was struck in such a way that it now uh, demands a premium because of its finish. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about that. And therefore, you would pay now, say, £20 for that coin. You go and buy this, you're going to pay £70. Maybe I'm seeing these sort of things go for £100, okay? So the question is, um, and let's go for this sovereign as well, for an example. Um, here we've got a proof sovereign, okay? Very proof sovereigns, proof coins. You know, they're struck crisper, they've got a better finish, they're rarer, there's less of them. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics, I just want people to understand that here we have a normal bog standard sovereign, 2020 sovereign, so we've got a 2010 sovereign, a 2020 sovereign, okay, same sovereign, same amount of gold, okay. This coin you could pick up for, say, £350, this coin you might pay £450 for, you know, well, four hundred pounds. We're going to pay more for it because it's rarer. It's in a slab. It's less of them. Um, it's a proof coin. Blah blah blah. There's only so many of them. Now, what we have to remember is that uh, the value that's attributed to these collector coins in this set is based on the market demand. Now, you can't just because you may. Uh, because I like this coin and I paid more for it, it doesn't mean the next time when I come to sell it in a year's time or five years time that I'm going to really get that premium back. Okay, I might get it back. I probably hope to get it back, but I could have bought a duffer. This isn't a particularly special coin. I mean, it's it's a proof coin. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that I've paid a bit more for it. It's nothing groundbreaking. You know, it's not suddenly going to become worth £2,000, okay? It's going to be worth slightly more, okay? Now, one of the reasons people believe that actually investing in a, a slabbed coin or something that's numismatic got some interest, you know, it's, it's over and above and beyond a normal bullion coin that's just churned out and it's stamped in a press, yeah, you know, millions are just churned out every month. Okay, these are special, special years. You know, they come in sets. They've got special finishes. All the rest of it is that the spot value of gold obviously fluctuates. Therefore, if you've got something with a premium value attributed to it because it's a proof coin, therefore you are somewhat protected. You you know um, against the drop in gold. So we could say that if a gold price retracts, that this coin will hold up better than this sovereign okay gold price drops this is only worth 250 um you know or plummets this thing holds um at 375 you know because it's numismatic because it's got some extra over and above value and that's brilliant you might say well, that's wonderful that's that's just make everything you know make sure we invest in this but obviously the problem with that is You've got to pay more, you might have a budget, you know, and you can't afford things. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is we've got roughly um, two ounces of gold here. And we've got two ounces of bullion here. Now, let's move on to something else. So this set here. So, you know, uh, when you buy larger denominations of gold, uh, generally the, the larger the coin bar, bigger the bar, you're going to pay less premium. So obviously... A one tenth of an ounce coin, you're going to pay outrageous. I mean, people I say outrageous. We'll come on to that again in a minute about premiums and whether you should worry about them. You, know, you could pay uh, you know, 10 15 percent on that, and a one ounce coin, you might only pay five percent premium on it. Okay, so obviously, um, this costs a lot more, it's going to cost you like 1500 pounds now. I'm sorry, I'm talking in pounds if you're an American, but um, in the UK, um, and um, you know. Um, that's just the way it's generally always been. Okay. Now, problem with buying a set like this, you could think, well, yeah, I want to invest, say, you know, a few thousand pounds in some gold. I'll just buy a set, and then I've, I'm hitting all the whammies of, you know, I've got something numismatic, a nice set, and I'm getting, you know. But the problem is, you're going to pay 
probably quite a premium on a set, quite a lot more if it's a decent set. And then you've got the problem with, you know, this is made by a mint called the Pop Joy Mint. Now, we don't know anything about, like I said, this video is people that don't know that much about investing in gold and silver. I, I probably guarantee you haven't heard of the Pop Joy Mint, which, um, you know, if you haven't heard of it, when you come to liquidate this in five years time, the person that you are now who knows nothing is going on eBay to buy your gold that's gone up in value. Are they going to care about the pop joy mint? Are they going to want to pay your premium? You know, is anyone going to care? You know, the same amount of gold here, two ounces of gold, two ounces of gold, premium, premium. They may care. They may not care, you know? Um, and are you prepared to split this up? What if somebody says, oh, you know, can you split this coin up, you know, or there could be any other, you know, numerous issues with it. You know, like I say, if you haven't got the time or the energy or you can't find anyone, you're not sure what to buy, um, then stick with bullion, I believe, from a, a well-known reputable uh, dealer. OK. <sighs> Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so premium people worry about the premiums on small coins, so and, and one gram bars and all the rest of it. The bottom line is, you're going to be charging this premium back when you come to sell your uh item, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. And um, you know, you've got to remember that, um, you know, th there's obviously it's all about supply and demand. Now, you've got say, say you, you know, you've got three items here and you've got a load of items here. If you've put all your money in one basket with a load of sort of numismatic stuff that you're hoping is going to go up in value, suddenly in two years time you just realise you want to liquidate it, what are you going to do? Whereas here you could just go, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell these three on eBay and then I can pay for my, you know, I don't know, to have a new kitchen. You know, I'm just going to, I'm going to give somebody this as a, as a payment for something because uh, I owe them 50 pounds a gram gold hitting, you know, three years time could be 150 pounds a gram. I'm, you know, I'm going to give them payment for fixing my leaky bathroom, you know, you can't do that with this. Okay. You just got to kind of stick it in the vault. Whereas this is more liquid. Okay. And this smaller fractional gold, um, you know, you're, you're going to be able to shift it easier. You also have to bear in mind that the entry level. So what you're looking at now, one gram, one gram, one tenth of an ounce gold. In fact, let's just talk about one gram bar. A one gram bar, you know, uh, whatever that is now, sixty-five dollars, give or take. You know, if that in five years' time is um, three hundred dollars, that's quite a fair chunk of cash for somebody. That's what the generation, you know, the, the broken generation, whatever generation, the millennials, the rest of it, that when they just sort of finally wake up and realise they need to invest in some gold, they that's going to be their entry point. Do you think they're going to be, how many people are going to afford to be able to pay, you know, £700,000 for a sovereign and care and appreciate the fact, you know, they just want to own some gold. Um, you need to take these things into consideration, you know, the market. So... Um, that's why I try and have a, a bit of a balance, you know, I tend to have a bit of numismatic and a bit of bullion. I am, I generally like my physical portfolio to be, um, probably more bullion, you know, 70% bullion. Um, I used to be 50, 50, but I've gone more bullion now. And the reason I've gone more bullion is because of the market volatility at the moment. Although I'm long-term gold, I'm still... I don't like the fact that if you're going to buy numismatic stuff, you're still going to have to pay the stock spot price, you know, that can take it on the chin and that's going to get heavy with the premium on top. I mean, this set here, whatever it is, um, is something outrageous about four thousand pounds, you know, so it's, so it's got a monstrous premium on it. I just don't think that, that value is there. I, I really don't know if I could stick that back out into the market today and whether somebody would pay that premium just to have this set. They may do. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's just some things to bear in mind there um, um, when you're making your gold and silver purchases. What you you know, um, what you're going to do. It's not about just buying it now. It's how you liquidate it, and it's about um, trust. And obviously, you don't want to be scammed. You don't want to be going. You got to realise that I can take this. I can just take this now pretty basic this is happening right now on ebay and take this one ounce 
2020 Britannia. Send it off to NGC, put it, get it in a slab, and then charge it, put it out for £100, yeah? You'll get a grade. Let's, let's say it doesn't get an MS-70, so, uh, you know, MS-70 is the, the top grade generally. Say it gets an, you know, something reasonable in MS-60. You don't know what that is. If you're watching this, like I said, and you're, you're a noob to it all, you go and pay 60, 50, 60 pounds for that, when you should have just paid 20 pounds for it. Do you see what I mean? Do you know enough to know that you should just be buying that from a bullion dealer? Yeah. Um, and it all go, it goes the same for this. Now, I tend to stay uh, well clear of of anything more than half an ounce really at the moment um, because I'm just thinking about liquidation. Um, now, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I'll come back on. I'll come. It'll come back to me in a minute. Um, so yeah, that is basically in summary my thoughts on buying uh, slabbed coins and bullion. Um, quite annoyed. There was one point that I was going to make, but I can't remember it. Um, okay. Well, any thoughts? Uh, let me know. Like and subscribe. That'll be great. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll try and do my best to answer them. Um, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, it's about, there's quite a lot of hate on people, you know, there's a video I made about buying one gram bars and small bars. Um, the point I wanted to make is you can see that if you're just, if you can only afford one gram or small amounts of gold over time, it's still worth doing because it still builds up. You know, it doesn't have to be. You don't have to. You can you can be easily put off by. You see all these videos and people flaunting one ounce, five ounce bars everywhere. You know, uh, I believe that. You know, the money you could spend on a one gram bar of gold or a small one tenth coin, you could people would just piss piss money away on far worse things, on trash. My advice to you is to, if you've got junk sat in your house, you know, you can flog on eBay. That's what I used to do. I used to look around my spare room and my garage and go, what can I sell on eBay so I can buy gold or silver? Yeah, turning my junk into something which is a lasting, um, in, in something I can invest in and see and hold is actually going to go up in value rather than just, you know, fritting it away on rubbish. Obviously, interest rates at the moment, uh, your cash is going to do nothing in the bank because it's it's just zero everywhere. Um, if your person has got a pension, you know, and you're relying on all that, you've got a big problem. Uh, God knows what financial advisors are telling people to do with their money. They certainly aren't going to say stick it in the bank. I mean, the way I see it at the moment, gold, um, I think it's, it's quite volatile at the moment. It's been a few pullbacks, but I think the all-time high, I think we're going to stay around, it's going to be above that. I think it's going to stay around 19 35 um between 1920 and 1950 there's there is it has gone up to 2000 again recently there is a resistance level in 1950 it's clear that the market's testing now given the fundamentals of the you know the u.s job figures that came out um jobless figures are over well over a million if it was 900 000, but it's something like 1.2 million you've got chuck into all that all the you know, trillions of money printing you've got just about every countries in recession are they are not seeing it because of all the money printing yeah so people were saying you know why is it like 2008 9 when banks going bankrupt just because of mmt modern monetary theory where you just print your way out of it that's the way it is now it's print 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 printing money all oh, my, my business is broken i'm broken everything's broken don't worry we'll fix it we'll just print money that is the way it's gone so we're printing money uh, we're seeing short-term, probably a bit of short-term deflation here and there. I don't think the inflation is going to kick in for a while, maybe not until next year. But basically you can't print this, you can't flood economies. You just can't. There's, there has to be an economic impact. Now, looking at my market analysis and you know the people that I follow and talk to, uh, we are 22,200, I reckon, is probably the max gold price to the end of the year. And they're looking at, you know, within a year, you know, within three years, 3,400 an ounce. You know, there is, cra you know, I don't want to say crazy, like people got theories of $15,000 an ounce in, you know, 
10 years time if it carries on like this you know the projections these are all projections obviously um so just some things to bear in mind there you shouldn't panic about your gold you know you can go out and spend you know just say you know you go and spend your hard earned money on a one tenth coin and you buy you, you pay 170 pounds for it whatever and then you suddenly notice the gold price drops and it's only worth 150 you know you don't worry about that just be glad you weren't stupid to go and trading on the stock market and then you lost all your money you know and you still got it it won't really matter the um the shift the daily fluctuation the gold price won't affect you because you own this thing and it's yours and over time it's going to go up in value because that's the proven uh theory of gold at the moment it's just gradual so you haven't got to worry about getting caught up in the gold price fluctuating if you just own it you know remember it's long term i don't buy gold i'm not buying this to flip tomorrow morning you, you can trade like that there are plenty of people that do very well doing that I'm making videos for people who are in it for the long term, you know, want to hold for years, um, want to build up something, okay, um, you'll be totally fine, okay, don't overextend, don't buy more than you can afford, that's my other um, thoughts that a lot of people go all in, they go max out and then they've got a fire seller on eBay because they've overextended, you need to be careful, that's why... Um, you know you need, to, you need to build it up gradually slowly a bit at a time and then you know uh, when you've got a sizable amount then you can look at liquidating some you know every of course if you pay i don't know let's just say 1500 pounds an ounce for your gold and then five years time it's a year's time it's worth two thousand pounds an ounce and you've got five ounces you want to sell then of your portfolio then that's fine you know um, I think that's fair enough to liquidate it, you know. I don't like actually selling gold. I don't like it. It's very hard to part with it, actually. It's, it's, what's great about investing in precious metals is, is that it's kind of a great way of saving because it stops you from people just spunking their cash on crap, you know. Once you've invested in something, it's very difficult to go and, obviously, if I want to sell this, I've got to either go to a shop sell it on ebay you know or another auction site like facebook site or something or over all the trauma of doing that you know whereas if i've just got cash in the bank burning a hole in my pocket it's very easy to fritter it away on stuff before you know it you know so um just some thoughts there so in summary in this climate 2020 covid i feel that if you don't know a lot you should not be too tempted by all the videos that you see of people relentlessly holding up amazing coins and the latest thing from the royal mint the latest thing from you know whatever mint uh you need to go for tried and tested simple basic world renowned bullion coins i.e you know, sovereigns one you know, full sovereign you know half sovereign if you can't afford a full sovereign britannia's um eagles gold eagles american eagles you know one tenth whatever get the most you haven't got to worry then you can just go and buy a sovereign stick it in a corner you know you've got a legitimate uh, coin which is is going to hold its bullion value and you haven't got to worry about whether you've bought something should you have bought the set should you have bought a 2011 slab pf 70 ultra cameo instead of the 2010 you know should you get the set now you know blah 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 you know you can just buy it forget about it and stick it away and you've still got a great investment i think um rather than you know, taking any risk so um just some thoughts there um again i will sort of offering and um i hope you found this interesting and of course you know make sure you take care with your investments uh again it's not financial advice just my thoughts on the gold market current situation and um yeah i don't going to say stay safe because it's a really annoying cliche um but i'm going to say i hope you have a nice weekend because probably by the time you listen to us it might be friday see you soon